Well, welcome back, everyone. This is our final symposium presentation. Uh, many of you have uh, heard of Paths to Literacy, and for many years it has been my go-to place, uh, finding there a huge treasure trove of resources supporting blind literacy for blind, deaf, blind, and students who are visually impaired. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Kate Borg, who will be presenting Walking Through Paths to Literacy for All Things Braille. Uh, Kate is the Director of Outreach Programs at the Texas School for the Blind and Visually Impaired and the Texas Deafblind Project Coordinator. Kate joined TSVVI in 2019 after working at the Utah School for the Deaf and for the Blind and in Prince William County, Virginia. Kate has been a school principal, instructional coach, classroom teacher, and itinerant TVI, working with students who are blind, visually impaired, and deafblind. In addition to leading TSVVI's outreach mission, Kate serves as the current president of the Texas chapter of the Association for Education and Rehabilitation of the Blind and Visually Impaired, and sits on the research grant committees to improve instruction for students with sensory impairment. Thank you very much, um, Kate, for joining us. And I, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Daphne Hitchcock. Um, I am the new president of Braille Literacy Canada, and we are so thrilled to have everyone here. Kate, thank you. Go ahead, please. You are so welcome. And thank you so much for the invitation. Um, those of us that know Paths to Literacy, I think love Paths to Literacy. So it is very easy to come and, and talk about this and, and share this resource with all of you today. I need to start out, first of all, thank you for the introduction. That takes one thing off of my checklist of don't forget to do, because um, sometimes when I'm presenting, I just get so excited about what I'm going to talk about that I want to just jump right in. Um, so now I don't need to introduce myself. Um, but I do want to share just a little anecdote uh, with all of you. So this week I have been uh, working at a camp that is um, teaching kids how to play Dungeons and Dragons. So you are all learning something about me today that I don't share with many people, that I really like to play Dungeons and Dragons. And today I needed to leave early, just, you know, like half an hour so I could, I could be here with all of you today. And one of the kids said, well, where are you going? And I said, oh, well, I'm going to go and, and talk with some people about Braille. Remember, this is at a Dungeons and Dragons camp. And this kiddo looked up at me and he said, that sounds like nerd stuff. <laughs> and I had to laugh because, you know, we were playing Dungeons and Dragons. And so I do. I guess I love the nerd stuff because I love playing D and D, but I also love talking about all things Braille. Um, I think we all do, which is why we're here, all nerding out together um, on on Braille. Um, I wish that I could have heard some of the other pre presentations. I caught the previous one, just the the last bit of the question parts. So I'm excited to go through the materials. It, it sounds like and looks like there were a lot of good things that were shared. Um, so that is fantastic. Um, you know, I know that. Any of us who present or talk about or teach, we all just love when we're talking about technology, especially that we have glitchy tech technology. Um, the good news is that we have a brand new Paths to Literacy website. The bad news is that it just launched this week. And so there are still some glitches and some broken links and some pages that just seem to be taking an extra minute to load. And so as we go through some of the things on the site, I want to apologize ahead of time. Um, if there are any glitches or if something does take an extra minute to load, um, I, I just apologize in advance for that. But like I said, the good news is, is we have a new site um, and I'm gonna talk just a little bit about how we arrived at that um, in, a, in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Are you all able to see that okay? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. 
Here we go. Sorry, I'm just moving my water bottle for myself. All right. So on our cover page, we have a, a picture of a cute kiddo sitting at a Perkins Braille writer. All right. So it's a little bit about the history of Paths to Literacy. So Paths to Literacy is a collaboration between Perkins School for the Blind and Texas School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Um, you know, the two schools have, have worked together for a long time and on a lot of things. But this was the, the first partnership of, of an online resource, the first like cooperative venture um, for an online resource. Um, the second is the activelearningspace.org website, if any of you are familiar with that. Um, and so we do have these two websites that, that, these, that we run together with Perkins School for the Blind. And really the hope was just that by, by combining resources and expertise um, that we could could really help to stimulate discussion around Braille, but I think more important to, to really like stimulate the sharing of resources and ideas and lesson plans and the, the latest research for students who are blind, have low vision, um, students with additional disabilities and students who are deaf blind. The website was developed and launched in 2010. So we are in year 12 um, and really pretty much was a, the same website until, like I said, just this week. Um, it's on a new platform and looks very different uh, than it has for the last 12 years. Um, in the last 12 years, we've had 3 million unique visitors to the site from 236 countries. And can I tell you all a secret? I'm not sure if I knew that there were 236 countries <laughs> um, that felt so high. Um, but I think that that's awesome. So this has a worldwide reach for sure. Okay. I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, in a few minutes about how to contribute, because that's something I think that we all really like about Paths to Literacy, and I know is my favorite thing, is that this really is a collaboration, not just of Perkins and of TSBVI, but this is a collaboration of the field. Uh, for sharing ideas, for sharing lesson plans. In thinking about um, what we wanted this new site to be and to look like and what information we wanted to make sure was on there, um, we put together several focus groups. In fact, I recognize some names on here, so I think that you may have been in, in a focus group or two um, with some of us. Um, and just ask questions, things like, what do you use on Paths to Literacy? What are some of your go-to pages? What are some of your go-to resources, especially around Braille? And then also asked, but what's missing, right? So there are thousands and thousands of pages and resources, but we still knew we weren't getting everything. Um, and so we had focus groups with TVIs. We had focus groups with parents and families. Um, focus groups with administrators and university personnel um, to ask those questions. So based on that feedback, um, Cyril Miller and Charlotte Cushman really did the heavy legwork um, to, to curate all of the thousands of pages of information and to organize it in such a way that it was easier to find things, easier to navigate, um, and, and easier to, to find information relative to why you're visiting Paths to Literacy. Um, and, and again, we'll get there in just a minute. So the content has been updated. Lots of new content has been added, especially based on that feedback from these focus groups. Some things have moved around, so they may not be under a category that they were under before, but old links should still work. Again, if they don't work today, give us some time <laughs> to figure it out and they should work. Um, very soon. Um, and we invite everybody to go and explore. So today we're going to both kind of work off some of the slides, but also want to take just a little bit of a tour through the new site. So we're going to open up Paths to Literacy. And here we are on the landing page. And we have a beautiful kind of a, I don't even know what color of green to call this. It's like a, a dark teal uh, green background, which I just love. Let me tell you, we had a whole meeting with the web designers <laughs> just on this color, uh, but I love it. I think it's just so inviting. 
So on the landing page, we've got two kiddos. It looks like maybe a brother and a sister who are sitting at a Perkins brailer and a big, um, I guess a big welcome uh, banner there at the top of the page. As you scroll down, uh, you'll see a, a section that says overview, literacy foundations. We're gonna talk about that in a second. And then we see explore our community. So one of the pieces of feedback that we got again was like, especially parents and families, they said, I come to pass the literacy and I feel so overwhelmed. Um, one, one mother in particular said, I came to learn about Braille, but I couldn't even find where to start. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that, that we were very cognizant that people that were visiting to pass the literacy, not all of us had a background in Braille. Um, on the first visit and knew what we were looking for. And so that's why we wanted to kind of reorganize according to our audience. So you'll see um, on the page, it says explore our community. And then we have a box that says parents and families, a box right next to it to the right that says educators, and then a box that says about paths to literacy. So you can learn a little bit more about the site. Scrolling down more is a place to sign up for the newsletter. Um, Right now, that newsletter comes out monthly, I want to say, and I think that that's the plan is to keep it coming out monthly. Um, there are also featured collections and just some more information um, and some like highlighted uh, quotes or highlighted research. So today um, we're highlighting Dr. Ting, if any of you know Ting, um, who does a lot with especially assistive technology uh, surrounding literacy and Braille. Okay. So I'm going to scroll back up. Sorry if that makes anybody dizzy. And we are actually going to take a moment and go through some of these tabs um, on top. So on the top, there are four. The top, I guess, right um, of the page, there are four category links. Um, and we're going to go through those. So I'm actually going to go back to the slideshow. Um, here we go. We'll talk first about this. So that first category link that you see on the top right is called building foundations. And so this is really for people that are new to the field of blindness and, and blindness education. Um, this may be families, this might be new teachers, um, this might be a general education teacher that has a braille student for the first time and is wondering what to do. And so people that are looking for like introductory information either for themselves or to share with parents and other team members, this is a great place to start. There are 15 sections here um, to learn more and I'll list those out in just a moment, but everything is organized in this building foundation section um, according to these 15 areas. So again, this was another piece of feedback that we received from these focus groups is just, if someone doesn't really know what they're looking for, um, where do they go? And so I thought something called building foundations uh, sounds like a great place to start. So in this section, we talk about literacy basics. We talk about auditory learners, Braille, of course, CVI, deafblind education, students who are dual media learners, emergent literacy. Um, this has, oh man, I love, I love pre-Braille and early Braille. Oh, that's some of my favorite. English language learning, both for students who are low vision, but we have a lot in there about Braille learners that are, are also learning English. Learning media assessments, math, literacy. Um, so there are things that both have Nemeth because you know that especially Texas has got a death grip on Nemeth. Um, I could have a whole soapbox about that because I'm team UEB all the way. Uh, so no, I never have arguments with colleagues about that ever. Um, but then we have a lot about UEB and UEB technical as well. Um, miss multiple disabilities, orientation and mobility, struggling readers. Uh, you know, I, I know the field that we're all learning more and more about dyslexia and dyslexia for braille readers. Um, and so we're starting to curate more and more information about that and that as the outreach director here at TSBVI, that's a question probably this last school year, at least once a week had someone reaching out from a school district, often a school psychologist um, or often just like a reading specialist. We have a braille reader who we think may be dyslexic. What, what do we even do? Um, and then of course, visual learners and writing. 
So that's that building foundation section. Right next to the building foundation section, you'll see a drop down menu um, for activities and strategies. So activities and strategies, I mean, really is as advertised. So a lot of ideas for activities and lessons, such as ideas for babies uh, to communicate, um, for babies. So like things that, that families can do at home for some of those like um, early tactile learning programs. Um, uh, as we get like into more preschool age where we're really focusing on some of like the, the early literacy skills and building some like phonemic awareness and things like that. Um, and then um, continuing on for like community-based activities for teens and into our students who are of transition age, uh, that 14 and up. Um, and so ideas that, that run the, the age and the life of, of a child. We also have a lot of ideas for o and strategies that incorporate literacy. Um, how are we teaching students to find and access Braille in the community? And then adaptations for students with multiple disabilities or students who are deaf blind. Um, and so, you know, again, here's Braille. Now, how do we make Braille accessible uh, for students who are on lots of different reading levels? Um, so here we have a screenshot of part of the page. Um, and so, you know, we've got a blog that's a story of a washing machine learning by participating in daily activities. And so this article or this blog entry um, talks about how daily learning activities really contribute to, to literacy and what that means. Braille for sighted classmates and family members who maybe want to learn um, a little bit about the Braille code. Bedtime in a box made accessible. So some story time and story time routines and activity boxes about bedtime. And then playing with sound, the world of digital journalism. Um, so really kind of cool. So you can see just on this, this screenshot, just the, the gamut um, of, in the spectrum of different kinds of resources and articles. All right, the next tab over to the right is one that says resources. And again, as advertised. So resources is where we've got lessons and materials, um, storing new research and sharing new research apps and technology, and then also events and announcements. I'm gonna go there for just a second. This is the section that at first glance can feel overwhelming uh, because there is so much information there. My little circle is spinning. This is our first, our first little technology pause. Anybody have a good joke? <laughs> we wait for this page to load. Um, while we're waiting for this to load, let me go back here to the slide. Um, here we go. Um, this has on the slide is just a, a picture of that landing page for resources. Um, the first one is, is advertising a book, showcasing a new book that says for spacious skies book now available in Braille. Uh, the next picture over educational app. Um, and so this is Cosmo Bali on Sono Planet. This is actually new for me. I'm excited to, to jump in and see what this is all about. And then um, a book um, by an author and a parent and advocate named Feather, and I'm not sure how to now pronounce her last name, C-H-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, called The Colors of Darkness. All right, here we go. Our resources page is loaded. So like I said, that at first glance, this page can feel really overwhelming because there is so much information. On the bottom where it has the little page numbers, it goes from one and then you can see that it ends at 180. Um, and so just a lot. But one of the things that we've added that is new is the ability to filter by topics. I'm not going to read through this whole topic list, but just know that it's there. And so you can check boxes um, to say, hey, I am specifically looking for resources on, well, of course, Braille because that's what we're here for. And let's say emergent literacy. And so everything that's been tagged with Braille and emergent literacy is going to populate on this page. And so that way I've given myself at least a little bit of a shorter list that I can comb through 
um, to find information that I might be curious about. And so I was really excited about that feature because again, through these focus groups and even just things that I've heard from folks about paths to literacy is there's a lot of information. And then also people would say, there's so much information. And so it was a good thing, but it was an overwhelming thing. But now we've got this ability that we can tag things and make them very easy to find. So you can see here, um, just some, some great articles about early literacy and Braille. Okay, so TVI creates Braille videos with Jack Hartman, assessing a leader's reading and write or a learner's reading and writing knowledge assessment tool. Anyway, I won't go through all of these, but take a look at the page and, and see what kinds of things you're able to find as you, as you uh, check those boxes. Okay, let's come back to the presentation. All right. And then that next tab over, Paths to Literacy also houses some really kind of cool projects um, on its site. And so what we, we house um, some microsites, we call them. So in part of the special collections, we have something that's called Dots for Families. And this was put together by uh, Penny Rosenblum. And this is really like a, just a wonderful tool and some resources and activities to get families started um, to the learning Braille. And so as you know, their child, whether sibling or child or, or just member of their family is, is learning Braille, the family can learn along with them. So dots for families, I highly recommend taking a look at that. Braille Brain is a, cu a curation of information and resources and best practices for teachers of students with vision impairments for teaching Braille. So that's Braille Brain. Now, remember I said, you know, there, there are some, some folks in the states that are still really holding tight to Nemeth. Um, and so we have Project Inspire. And this is actually really a cool, cool project. So it um, increasing the STEM potential of individuals who read Braille. So Project Inspire. Um, and so they do a lot of things. If any of you have heard of uh, like Nemeth in a Box, this is a, a, a program that came out of Project Inspire. Susan Osterhaus and Tina Hertzberg uh, really, really lead this project. And they are having some really cool activities and camps and, and things for students to learn and have access to more uh, math and, and sciences, um, and then really uh, teaching students to be fluent Nemeth users. Um, so it's really a cool, like I said, a really cool, cool tool and cool program, it is. Playing with words. Um, this was put together originally by Linda Haygood um, and will continue to be updated. Um, you know, I, I am sure that many of you have heard that we did lose Linda uh, this last year, um, which was very sad for all of us um, in the field. You know, Linda Haygood contributed so much and helped us understand so much, especially about play and communication and storytelling. Um, and so her information is just perfect for a place like Paths to Literacy. Um, so she, this playing with words specifically talks about play-based storytelling story telling for students with multiple disabilities and incorporates print and braille um, into those activities. And then finally, um, another special collection or another microsite is tools. Um, this is really like a best kept secret. So this is tools to support you in having a student with a visual impairment in your K to six general education classroom. So just from that very lengthy title, you can see that this is a section that's really um, dedicated to and written for our gen ed teachers who may not have experience working with a child who is blind. Um, you know, as we all know from the field, but that can make a teacher very nervous. Um, and so this is just an excellent resource to hand them to or hand to them and say, spend some time here and then let's talk. So this really is one of the best kept secrets on paths to literacy. Um, again, this was put together by Penny Rosenblum. There are 11 video lessons that provide a basic introduction to educators um, that, that have a student with a vision impairment for the first time. So it's a, it's a wonderful section. I really encourage you to spend some time in there and then encourage you to share it out. Um, it's so great. Share it with families too, so that they can share it uh, with their child's teacher. 
Okay. When we were scrolling through the page, um, the landing page, I'm going to go there again. So I'm back at the home page and I'm scrolling down um, back to where it says explore our community. And so you can see these boxes again, parents and families, educators, and then where it says about paths to literacy. So the parents and families page, like I said, um, from the focus groups, we got a lot of feedback um, about just needing a place for parents to go in a comfortable way to learn more um, about what might be available for their child, to learn about their child's vision impairment, and to learn about how their child's going to access their learning and access literacy. Um, and so that link on the slide will also take you right to that page. And so you can see at the very top, it says, welcome parents. Get started here with tips for your young child. Um, and I just, I just, I love that. I love how welcoming it is. Um, the first button uh, that you can press says family-centered literacy activities. Um, and again, just so much fun. So many fun things that families can do at home. And the thing that are so thing that's so fun about so many of these activities is that it doesn't require them um, to have a professional in their home at that moment. These are things that families can very easily do and put together. Um, you know, I think our parents have so many good skills and helping them understand, like just intrinsically, you know, you know these things. Um, and so I think, again, this, this part of the site is also a comfort to parents, you know, just to let them know you got this, you know what to do. Um, a section here called Daily Life, and this is where we uh, find that story of a washing machine. Um, and then a section of tips and activities. Um, we also have tips and guides, analyze your child's independent education program. Um, I'm sorry, I have a very silly question. And I, if someone in the chat doesn't mind, do you do, you do IEPs in Canada? Um, or do you have something similar, an individualized education program? Awesome, thank you for answering that. I just have never asked, so I didn't know. And then you'll see, um, again, towards the bottom of the page where it says latest in families. Um, so just some of the, the newest um, events or activities or apps, stories, things that have been shared. So this will update um, with things that are, are new. And then there's that dots for families, that special collection that we already talked about. Okay. Um, Another part of this uh, website is this tips for TVIs. And so um, we have <laughs> a lot of good information, yes, on teaching Braille and teaching Braille literacy, which really go hand in hand. Um, but then also some tips and tricks for things like how do you successfully collaborate? And I think when you're teaching Braille to a child, especially a young child, oh man, you have got to have some excellent collaboration skills, right? Um, and so knowing, knowing how to collaborate with those gen ed teachers. So that child is still making progress reading Braille, even when you're not there. Um, oh, that's so important. Um, and so I just love that that's, that's a focus. But again, this, this site here that's taking a minute to load. There we go. Just some tips and tricks for our teachers of students with vision impairments. Uh, who are out in the field and teaching Braille. So lots of ideas. Most of the things that are on here are curated from like our boots on the ground teachers that are out there. Um, ideas of like, here's how I'm starting to teach tactile graphics or here's how I'm, you know, teaching math symbols and just some really cool, um, cool things, cool activities and cool resources. All right. And then subscribe to the newsletter. So we have a, a free e-newsletter e and that's delivered to your email inbox every other week. I lied, I think I said monthly at first. It is every other week. Um, helps us keep up with the latest articles and ideas. And so often in the newsletter, um, either a topic or a specific article will be highlighted, but something that is new within that last couple of weeks. And it's very easy to forward those ideas to families and paraprofessionals, related service providers. Again, past to literacy, none, none of the information that's on there is proprietary, meaning like we want it shared out. 
we want this in people's hand and we want this to be used. That's why it's there. Um, Paths to Literacy also has a really big social media presence. Um, Pinterest. Now, I have to tell you, I am not a big Pinterest user. Um, I remember seeing a meme once and I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. Um, so the meme was from the point of view of a spouse who said, all I know about Pinterest is my wife spends six hours browsing Pinterest and then we eat salad out of a mason jar. And I just had to laugh because I'm like, yeah, that's all I know about Pinterest as well. But apparently Pinterest is actually the busiest um, presence that Paths to Literacy has on the internet. Pinterest has more users and more hits than even the website does. And so many idea, uh, ideas are being shared about Braille, um, teaching Braille and reading Braille and fun activities and community-based activities. So Pinterest is on there. I was given direct instruction to talk about Pinterest, even though I don't know much about it. Um, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram also has, uh, Pat's Literacy has a presence on those as well. There's a wonderful article that's written by actually one of our DeafBlind team project members, uh, Casey Bennett, called, Did You Know That You Can Use Pinterest as a Collaboration Tool? And Charlotte Cushman told me that I needed to make sure to share this because if there is anybody, <laughs> I'm pointing to myself, there was anybody that wasn't sure about Pinterest and using Pinterest that this article would convince them um, that it's a great way to share information. Uh, so there's a link to that article um, on, on this slide. We genuinely and pleadingly invite you to share your ideas. So on this slide, we have the email address for Leisha. Oh, I practiced her name and I'm going to botch it. And I'm not even going to try. It's a very long last name that starts with a Y. <laughs> Who is the new person um, that Perkins has hired to really curate um, and, and manage the Paths to Literacy website? Um, on the next slide, I'll give you the information for our TSBVI person who will be assisting her. It's okay if your thoughts aren't fully formed. You do not need to come to us with a fully completed article with resources and you know written in APA and, and whatnot. No, 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 no. Even if all you have is an idea, reach out to us so that um, we can get in touch with you and talk about what's your idea. How can we write this up? How can we share this with the public? So we're here to help you share your ideas as easily as possible. You can learn more about this. There are links on, on this slide. Um, that will take you to the guidelines. And um, if you feel like you are ready to submit something, there's some guidelines about how to submit an article and, and kind of what we need um, that to have just so that we've got all the information to make it as fully accessible as possible. Um, and then of course, sharing ideas um, from paths to literacy. And then finally, um, I've got some contact information. Oh, and I'm so sorry. Um, on this page, there's a, a picture of a, a young woman who is using a 2020 pen uh, to write on some, some large print paper. It looks like she's sitting in a library. Um, so I think she's getting ready to share some ideas. And then here on this last slide, we have a, a great picture, one of my favorites, um, of a young student, uh, probably teenage years, uh, in the kitchen. Um, looks like they are are preparing a meal. Um, so on the very last slide, our, we have our email addresses. So Leisha, who is uh, working out of Perkins, is our site manager. Kathy Garza is um, part of our outreach team here at TSBVI. And she is um, helping to curate and manage and create content. Um, and so you can reach out to Kathy. And then my information is there as well. I'm Kate Borg. Um, and so I'm the outreach director here. I will tell you that I am not the most knowledgeable person about paths to literacy, but I am very enthusiastic about it. Uh, Leisha and Kathy both are in different places. Kathy is uh, teaching one of our summer camp programs this week, and Leisha is in Paris. So that's why I was here today with you. But I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, now or by email, if I don't know the answer, I'm really good at saying I don't know, but I will find out. Um, so, well, any Kate, questions? yes, thank you, Kate, for taking us through the new Paths to Literacy website. 
you know, the world, worldwide reach, the popularity of this website clearly attests to its relevancy of content, its fresh ideas and old ideas that still work. It, it really is a, a welcome landing place for parents and, and educators. And we love the fact that you are sharing these tried and true um, resources that have really worked for, for the people. Um, and it, your enthusiasm is just contagious and your love for <laughs> all things Braille speaks volumes. So I'll hand it over to Anthony to monitor the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Thank you for that, that great presentation. We already have one hand up. Uh, Iwana? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Hi. Um, yes, great, great. I mean, it's such a, I, I'm sure I'll have to sit and explore because it seems like there's so much information on so many topics that we could just scratch the surface. So um, I was just wondering, in all this wealth of information, do you have anything about uh, teaching music Braille, Ooh. which is something that's near and near to my heart. And it's part of, I think, very clearly part of literacy. And anyway, yeah. Yeah, you know, I would agree with that. I want to say yes, I am pulling up resources because I want to make sure that I'm not lying to you when I say that. Um, I feel like we talked about it having its own section. There is, yep, music um, does have a nice. section in there. I will say that I, I don't know that it's ro as robust um, as some of the other sections. So if this is something that you're passionate about, let us um, know. Yeah, yeah. We can it, talk, totally. we can talk yeah, about yeah. some, yeah, some resources yeah. that you might want to help us put together. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good, we'll, we'll, we'll see, but yeah, thank you. Okay. Debbie? Debbie Brown. Um, yeah, I am wondering if you have any information on ideas of, you know, sometimes we do these kind of quick public relations to cool school kids or at, um, you know, local festivals and stuff, and you get a table and you do something. Do you have anything about um, that, that any quick introductions to Braille, um, you know, to, to share different ideas that people have used to do that? Yes, 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 yes. So under those special collections, that dots for family section um, has some great information and some great activities. So they're really easy uh, to, to share out. You know, when, when I do some of those display kinds of tables, of course, we'll bring like a Perkins Braille writer, we'll bring a slate and stylus. Um, and depending on where the showcase is, you know, even like a Braille embosser, um, and so the, the dots for families um, has some just really good information and, and, and ways to share, you know, this is what a Perkins Brailler is, and this is what it does. Um, Slate stylus the same, you know, here's how some activities to try with that. But then also give some like, here's the history of Braille, and here's a basic run through of the Braille code. Um, you'll also find very similar information, again, in the special collections, but in that that one that says tools for general education teachers. Um, you'll find a lot of that same information. Debbie, does that answer your question? Yes, that's it. That's okay. good. Okay, excellent. Natalie? All right. Hi, Kate. Hi, Natalie. <laughs> it's fun to get to meet you, I guess, in, in Zoom person. Yeah, we've been exchanging emails. Well, I'm, I'm just so excited. Um, Path to Literacy is such an amazing resource. And I just want to flag that uh, for those of you who teach adults, it's also an amazing resource. For that, I teach future vision rehab specialists. And I think I mentioned Path to Literacy in just about every single one of my lectures. So <laughs> it's there's so much there. And I guess that kind of leads to my next question, uh, which is um, have, um, has the Pass to Literacy team ever thought about a dedicated area that really focuses on adult Braille literacy or literacy? Um, and if so, I'd love to connect with you to talk about that. You know, I, I don't know if historically that has been a conversation. You know, I don't know if there was a conversation about it for some reason they decided not to. But I would say that I, I can speak for Alicia and Kathy and myself and say that we absolutely would love to chat 
um, about that because you're right there's there are so many things that are crossovers right in terms of because yeah. literacy is literacy right it doesn't matter what age uh, braille is braille but but there are also then some special considerations when working with adults so yeah i think having um, either a section or we can add a tag right um that's like for adult education um amazing amazing great um, well, resources oh, yeah great we will definitely connect about that then and then mini follow-up question if you happen to know um you mentioned the nemeth resources um do you know if there's um, an extent or, or a section devoted to UEB math resources? Um, yes, and under math, you'll find things that are both Nemeth and things that are UEB. Amazing, thank mm -hmm. you so much, Kate. Oh, you're welcome, Natalie, thank you. Leona? Hi, um, so I, I am a, vision rehabilitation therapist. So I work with uh, mostly adult Braille learners, but I do, uh, I do um, provide pre-Braille instruction. Um, so sort of that very, very early introduction to Braille to mm -hmm. families and young kids. So I use um, Braille literacy on um, the website for the families that I work with. And of course, as Natalie mentioned, I do also use some of the resources for, for the adult learners. Um, and I just wanna say that I'm so glad that it is being revamped a bit um, because I was finding that I, as you mentioned, I was having to um, send out links to every single little article that I thought would be beneficial because the families were finding it so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to just kind of say, hey, go to this website and check it out. Um, so it's going to be so nice, going to be so nice to be able to maybe give them one or two to get them started and then feel like they can continue on their own instead of having to really be picky and choosy and, and sending them like individual links for each thing that I'm doing with, with their child or each, each time I think there's something relevant. Um, yeah to be able to have them be a little bit more um, independent with the website and, and have that confidence that it's not going to intimidate them um, is going to be nice. I look forward to exploring it more. Oh, Le Leona, thank you so much for that feedback. I'm excited to take that back to our, our website team um, because like I said, it, it, we've been so, tried to be at least so thoughtful about this and and listening to feedback. And that was, yeah, one of the, <laughs> the loudest pieces of feedback <laughs> was just how easy it is to get lost uh, or it was to get lost in the site. Please continue to give us feedback, Leona, as you're sharing with families. Let us know what families are saying and how they're able to, to access things because we want to, to tweak as we need to, to make it as accessible um, as possible. Okay, yeah, I'll keep an eye on that for sure. Yeah, thank you. Well, Kate, thank you very much for the, the wonderful tour of the new website. And uh, there are there are lots of resources there and anything that, that makes it easier to find what you're actually looking for is bound to be a good thing. So uh, I will thank you again for your presentation and for all of the questions and comments from people. And I think I'll turn it over to Natalie. She has another door prize in the wings. 